Okay, notice of a regular meeting of the City of Friendswood Planning and Zoning Commission to be held Thursday, November 14th, 2019, beginning at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers at City Hall, located at 910 South Friendswood Drive, Friendswood, Texas. First order of business is to call to order. Next, we have communication from the public committee liaisons. To comply with the provisions of the Open Meetings Act, the Commission may not deliberate on subjects discussed under this agenda item. However, the Commission may direct such subjects to be placed on a later regular Commission agenda for discussion and or possible action. Do we have anyone from the public that would like to speak? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item, which is the consent agenda. These items are considered routine or ministerial in nature and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of items unless a commissioner or citizen so requests, in which case the item would be removed from the consent, consent agenda and considered separately. Today we have the minutes from the October 17, 2019 regular meeting and the final plat of Kessel Chateau. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve and a second. All in favor? Chose to be unanimous. The next agenda item is our action items. And the first action item, first and only action item, is consideration and possible action regarding the site plan for 315 South Friendswood Drive, a mixed-use building in the downtown district. Do I have a motion? Motion approved. Second. A motion and a second. Aubrey, can you fill us in on this? Yes, sir. This is um, a new building that's proposed. Uh, the old Larry's Florist building, the two-story little um, white building on Friendswood Drive. That building will be demolished, and this one will be built in its place. Um, it on the first floor, it's going to be retail. Um, there's a yarn shop um, that's relocating from another city. Um, so that'll be on the first floor. I think she's going to do some other products in addition to yarn. Um, and then the second floor is going to be some office space and some shipping. They do online sales as well, so the second floor will be shipping area. Um, they do meet the parking requirements. Um, there was some negotiation that <laughs> and some, a lot of work that went in to get to where we landed on the parking. The layout was difficult. Um, but they do have some shared parking agreements and a shared driveway access with the adjacent owner um, to get all the required parking. And I think they actually ended up with about five extra spaces. So we look forward to this business uh, coming to Friendswood. Okay. Is there a representative of the owner here? Would you like to bring up any points of, of, uh, that we need to be aware of? Um, I'm here to answer any questions you have. It's this simple uh, reconstruction of re removing an existing building. Before you get started, can I ask you to identify your, your name and address? Please? Sorry. My name is uh, Selthent. I'm the engineer record for the project. Um, the, the scope of the work is essentially removal, removal of the existing building and, and uh, installing two-story um, brick facade building. Uh, as, as Aubrey mentioned, first flow is essentially a retail yarn quilt um, business, and upstairs is, is a offices with internet-based uh, non-retail, uh, non-storefront sale of, of uh, merchandise. So uh, the owner is uh, John McCausett, um, who is going to be developing the building. So, and um, we've got a, a regional detention approval through the drainage district, so there is no on-site detention required on this property. Um, and a uh, text out permit has been uh, submitted, and. The only modification that we're doing is the, the entry current drive that's there, the tax to require a 15-foot radi radius uh, on the entry. And of course, we have the streetscape uh, consisting of the standard downtown the brick pavers and lighting fixtures that we're getting permit for. So, okay. Thank you. If, if you don't mind staying there as we discuss it, there might be some more questions sure, to I'll come be happy up. To be here. Eric, did you have anything? Yeah. Zone change on this. I didn't think we were going to tear the building down. Am I, is my memory bad on that? Um, I came in, into this project late, so I don't know the, uh, the initial his history. But what I understand from John is that uh, they had originally developed a set of plans to to renovate the building, but after uh, bit getting bids on it, the cost to renovate was close to 
having a new building built, so they decided to go with the new building. Thank you. Uh, I think the building's very attractive. Thank you. Lisa? I had no reservations on this one. That building was pretty. Marcus? I'm good, thank you. Great. I'm good. Nick? Same question. Going through quickly. Well, I can't let you go that quickly. Um, <laughs> just a couple of questions. Where are you going to put the trash? There is a shared agreement between the existing developer who sold the, 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 the Larry Flores to them, and there's a dumpster right behind it. Okay, so you're going to share that dumpster, and you have an agreement to share that dumpster? Yes, it is my understanding. Oh, okay. Correct. Okay. And then the only other thing, well, um, it looks like you're extending the building back, pretty far back, matter of fact, mm -hmm. to where almost you're at the property line. Matter of fact, you're right, the corner of the building's right on the property line, it looks like, if I'm, if I'm reading it right. It, that's, that all meets the codes and requirements? There's no setback requirement in the back at Not all? in downtown district. It's all zero. So they can be right on the edge of the property, which, in fact, they are. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. I appreciate you coming up to answer our question. Thank you very much. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approval? It looks like it's unanimous again. Uh, the next item on the agenda is our discussion items. And the first one is discussion regarding adoption of an updated official zoning map for Appendix C, Zoning Ordinance, Section 3, Provision for Official Zoning Map. Becky, can you lead us through this? And, or, or Aubrey? I'll, I'll take it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so our the zoning ordinance requires uh, us to op update the official zoning map occasionally. Um, the official zoning map is, has to be officially adopted by ordinance, and the last updated map was adopted in 2015. And as we make zone change decisions throughout the, like once that new map is adopted, we have a spreadsheet and we track the changes, and then once that spreadsheet gets kind of full, um, we adopt a new map incorporate, incorporating all those changes and start over with a fresh spreadsheet. So. Over the years, you know, the city has, you know, we just progress with official zoning maps. And so this is just a formality to refresh our zoning map. And for the rest of the commission's information, we all met, or the, the, the uh, our subcommittee met with, Aubrey went through it, and uh, there were one or two things that still hadn't been updated, but they have now been updated. And so basically we, we just looked through it and, and confirmed that it's all up to date. So the pro so this is the subcommittees discussed it. So this is bringing it to the full commission. Um, so if uh, we don't have to have a formal vote tonight, as long as nobody has any major objections, we can move forward with a public hearing um, and send our recommendation to city council for them to have their hearing and adopt the new map. Um, our the next round. Uh, so to have a public hearing at our next regular meeting on the fifteenth of December, I have to send out the newspaper notices Monday. So we'll do that next week. Like I said, if nobody has any issues, and get that ball rolling and get it to council. What is what is the time period you have to put it out in advance? Uh, Fifteen days before the public hearing. Okay, and I think we're not going to have a, a, a meeting for about a month now. Mm -hmm. So you actually have a little more time than that. But okay, yeah, good. Any discussion on this? Dick, no, you already were involved, Lisa. Okay. Um, the next item, and get, be ready, there's four of them. Uh, discussion regarding proposed amendments to Appendix C, Zoning Ordinance, Section 7, Schedule of District Regulations, Section 7.5, Community Overlay District, and Section 8, North Downtown District, Supplemental Requirements to Change Building Material Requirements per House Bill 2439. Aubrey. So this is the same process. The subcommittee has discussed this, um, and so this is bringing it to the full commission. Uh, this is to change our local ordinances to comply with the uh, state uh, law that was changed as of September 1st that prohibits cities from regulating building materials and installation methods. Unless if a national model code um, within the last three iterations allows um, the building materials, then it's a permitted material. Um, we did change 
the ordinance to we left all of our preferred materials in the ordinance so that we can still encourage people to use the materials that we would like to see um, we did have to take out the fenestration requirements of the downtown district. We can't enforce those, um, but we can, again, suggest and encourage people. Um, we wanted to leave all that in the ordinance as much as possible. Hopefully, if, they, if the state decides to change these rules back in two years, um, maybe we can just you know revoke this ordinance and go back to what we had before. Um, so we're not really losing our intent out of the rules so if I can summarize this is a required change due to House Bill 2439 yes sir and the minimum change is necessary with the ability to change back should we need to yes okay Marcus do you have anything on this you want to talk about no thank you really yeah, yeah no we, I mean we pushed okay. and discussed and right oh. we landed right where uh, right where we need to be Okay, so, very good. Which we saw that coming. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, anything? We have to comply with state law. Yeah. Right. Is this something we couldn't just leave on the books and not enforce? Or, or, or by law, do we have to make this change? You could do it either way. Okay. Uh, we had discussions about that also. Um, I, my preference is to have our ordinances current okay. and so somebody doesn't accidentally make a mistake and try and enforce it. That makes sense. Well, I hope in two years we'll be up here revoking this. Uh, this was a huge overreach by the state and uh, I've written my local state representatives and I hope you all do the same. Uh, this <laughs> law just makes the state the de facto uh, architecture control committee for everyone. So it's very unfortunate. So I guess we got to do it. I wish I remembered his name, but I think he's near uh, from the near the Beaumont area down there. One representative from the uh, Beaumont area. Yes. Oh, Amarillo. Okay. Yeah, I think it's him south. But I'll look that up and let you know. Okay. okay. Um, item C: Discussion regarding proposed amendments to Appendix B, Subdivision Ordinance, Section Three K. Three, sidewalks. Do not require sidewalks in existing residential areas if sidewalks do not already exist. Aubrey. Hold this one up. I just have some pictures to help. You got a comprehensive plan on that. I think that's the next one. Yeah. That's not matching. Oh, there we go. That's my screen. Okay, so again, the subcommittee has discussed this, um, and it uh, actually presented it to city council in a workshop session um, just to explain the issues that we're having with the sidewalks. And so staff drafted some ordinance changes and then ran it through the subcommittee. Uh, we're here to present it you know, to the full commission. And again, same thing, if nobody has any major objections, we can move forward um, with getting this ordinance changed as well. So currently, sidewalks are required for all new development except for open ditches for residential, uh, single family residential or SFRE zoning. Um, we've had some infill lots and flood rebuilds in older subdivisions that don't have sidewalks. And staff doesn't have a means to just not require the sidewalks other than letting them pay into the sidewalk fund. Um, that's their only relief at this point. So uh, the sidewalk fund, the way that works is the builder gets or owner gets a, a three bids and for the four foot sidewalk for the length that it's supposed to be installed. And we take the average of the three bids and they pay into, we put it into one specific account for that address. That money can only be used to put sidewalks in front of that house or structure. So tracking those funds for individual houses um, you know, can be somewhat cumbersome. If the city goes in and redoes streets, typically 
we would install sidewalks, you know, as part of a street project. Um, and Public Works doesn't always remember to go look at sidewalk funds to see if, you know, three houses on that street had paid into the funds. So tracking that is somewhat difficult. Um, some examples of delayed. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Council's telling me. <laughs> so a, a couple of homes that we've had um, recently have been corner lots. So they have frontage on two sides of the street. There's existing trees or stop signs um, and things like that in the right of way that would, you know, impede the sidewalk. So uh, the proposal is to change the ordinance and add some exceptions regarding sidewalks. Basically, the other issue is that flood homes that don't have sidewalks on either side of them, it would be silly for us to, you know, require them to put a sidewalk in. And some of the, you know, heritage and the character of these older neighborhoods is the fact that they don't have sidewalks. So we don't want to go in and, you know, force the change um, on these older subdivisions. So in the subdivision ordinance, we would add exceptions that um, if open ditches are approved, then you don't have to do sidewalks, which that's the, um, that ordinance is already there. Um, the second exception was to be that the subdivision was accepted prior to sidewalks being a required improvement or that the property is an infill tract without an abutting sidewalk. Um, we also added two provisions that corner lots are required to install sidewalks along each frontage that has an abutting sidewalk. So if there's already a sidewalk, you know, connecting to their property line that they finish it. Um, so that may be, you know, maybe they install a sidewalk on one side but not the other. And then should an existing sidewalk be removed, the sidewalk must be replaced and built in accordance with the city's design criteria manual and standard construction details. Um, so on the screen, this is a, an example at Laurel Drive and West Shadow Bend. A previous house was demolished and a new one was built and the previous house didn't have sidewalks. There are no sidewalks on either side of the street, like the adjacent lots. There are sidewalks on the other across the street um, so pedestrians still have um, you know walkability actually driving around um, it actually looks like that maybe back in the day sidewalks were required on one side of the street not both um, that's kind mm -hmm. of what it looks like in some of the older neighborhoods that do have sidewalks they're on one side and not the other so the subcommittee talked about this um, I think your intent was to avoid unintended consequences of somebody having to put a sidewalk in that goes to nowhere. Um, and uh, when they're building a new house, uh, that's actually inside of an old, city, uh, old area. And uh, there was a lot of wording that was very carefully done. We tried to improve it. We, again, we couldn't. And so we took uh, the recommendation that went out for it. So, uh, Dick, did I miss anything? Eric, anything you want to ask? Or? I, we actually had two that in order to issue the COs, I think we did make them pay into the fund, but we would refund it. I don't think they paid. I think it may have been pending this conversation. Oh, okay. I know Good. that we had told them it was in the works, and honestly, I'm not entirely sure how the building official handled it because um, he, he was hamstrung. He couldn't give them their CO because we had this kind of hanging out there. So... Um, I don't, honestly, I don't know what he did with that. Okay. I, we had two. Sp but, I, yeah, there was two currently, like, right. right in the same area that they were, they were both redevelopments. Yeah, it was actually But there the was two. also flooded homes on that same street that are also going to be coming up. So right. we've, we yeah. have kind of a, a slew of But best case, them. this doesn't get passed till January, I guess, or. Correct. But it, if it's in the works, then we will 
hold off on any kind of he may have action issued, with the he may have issued temporary COs too, like just pending. Is a way to do that, that would be my guess. Yeah. I think they're both on my street. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two houses that just finished. Oh yeah. Right. Uh, this this one gives me a l little bit pause. I mean, I, I, on flood homes, yeah, I can see not requiring that. But like this house on Shadow Bend, my office right across from us, I watched that house go up. Uh, he, he's going to buy every house on that street. In fact, he's already bought two lots and turned down one house. And so, uh, it's, I think if you're going to spend five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars on a home, you can put in an eighteen hundred dollar sidewalk, and, and especially when he's going to redevelop that entire street. Uh, perfect time to put sidewalks in. So that's the only thing that gives me concern. If flood victims, yeah, don't make them required. But if someone's going to tear down a, a fifty thousand dollar home and put up a half a million dollar home. In, especially when he's doing the whole street we uh we did discuss that the building official and i we went through all of the open ones that were pending and tried to tear them each apart the issue with that one is there is no way to codify that i don't have a way to put in the ordinance this guy owns one lot maybe two maybe he buys another one like i don't have any way to put it i don't have a language to put in it um Open to suggestions if there's. <laughs> well, I don't want to do any put any burden on staff. Cause I know it's tough to track and all that. But I mean, uh, he he's already tore down the house to the right of that, and he's buying the next lot and the next lot. So he's going to own that whole street and buy. Well, and the difficulty with this particular lot is that tree right there on the. That is right where the sidewalk would go there, and so there's no. I mean, you're going to kill the tree, or you know, or the sidewalk's going to have to go on private property. Um, so that's oh, okay. I said part of the. <laughs> So I'll offer that we did we did press on that we we tried to come up with words and, and push back and those types of circumstances are probably pretty rare so to try to write an ordinance that would support that so I was trying to hold a hard a hard line too but I got backed off so uh, <laughs> and I, 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 I so I support it I mean it's obviously it came to you guys but there was a lot of debate okay. that makes you feel any better it does <laughs> <laughs> the consensus kind of came to. Especially on ones like that, if it becomes evident that there is a need for a sidewalk, then that's something that the city as the government maybe want to look at. It's hard to do it with individual owners because it's not common that you come across somebody that starts buying up houses adjacent to each other. And is it going to be, you know, one year, five years, ten years that he gets the whole block? So... And, and there might be one holdout in the middle anyway. Uh, so correct. You end up with <laughs> we tried, Brett. We really did. That whole neighborhood is ripe for redevelopment. In fact, that's his game plan. It, it's, it's get every house in that neighborhood and, and turn into like a West G or something. But, <laughs> but I, I trust y'all's judgment. So. Well, well, there'll be more, more discussion when it comes up again. Okay. But yeah, and you'll actually see the actual wording and such like that. Right now, we're just kind of talking about it as a concept. So. Right. Although we do have the wording. The other that the city has rebuilt that road twice in the last 15 years, and we haven't put in a sidewalk. So uh, there is a sidewalk on the other side of the street. Um, so that's just one of those instances. So I'm good. Okay. Lisa. There's a grammar error at the end there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Page one, number three. Oh, wait, no, no, never mind. <laughs> I'm so pleased. We really tried hard to change something, <laughs> just something to show that we'd actually looked at it. We couldn't improve it. <laughs> you it's good? It's not. It's not? Okay. All right. Good. Marcus, any last words? No, thank you. Okay. Uh, item D, discussion regarding the comprehensive plan. Aubrey. Okay, so this is a little bit, so the, those three that we just discussed will be ordinance changes, we'll move forward with the, um, the public, you know, the newspaper notice, public hearing, all that. So, but this one is a little bit different. Um, the plan going forward with this item, I'm gonna present in a workshop format to city council at the December 2nd meeting. Um, just some options, go over like what a comprehensive plan is, what we have already, and maybe how we can improve that. Um, so I just wanted to go over that in detail with you all 
um, so that everybody's on the same page and um, the, sub the planning subcommittee met and discussed this, um, kind of bounced around some ideas. So uh, I'm just gonna start our comprehensive plan. So comprehensive planning in itself, this isn't just a plan, but comprehensive planning um, has six purposes, to improve the physical environment of the community, to promote public interest, uh, facilitate democratic determination and implementation of community policies on physical development, affect political and technical coordination of community development, uh, long range uh, plans or considerations, and to bring professional and technical knowledge to bear on the making of political decisions concerning the physical development of the community. Is there any way we can enforce, enforce that last one? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> Uh, so state law has a few, if, if a city has zoning, you're required to have a comp plan. So the requirements are pretty uh, vague. Um, it just says that there has to include, but not limited to, provisions on land use, transportation, and public facilities. It can be a single plan or a coordinated set of plans organized by subject and geographic area and used to coordinate and guide the establishment of development regulations. Um, so under land use, the options are you can existing and planned land uses, general land use considerations, you can um, basically define how your commercial and residential or industrial areas are going to develop, um, and then protect environmentally sensitive or open space areas. So we do have our future land use plan that was adopted in 2008. Um, it is part of the existing so the 1998 comp plan is currently what's on the books. Um, the document as a whole hasn't been updated at that since that time, but this ma this particular map was updated in 2008. Um, the other wording in that chapter was not. It's the comprehensive um, plan chapter in the comp plan wasn't updated at that time. Just the map. Uh, transportation is another category, um, and we meet that requirement as well. We have our major thoroughfare plan, and we actually updated that in 2018. Um, I did rewrite, rewrote that chapter in the comp plan, so that is updated as well as late as 2018. And then under public facilities, your options, you can do public buildings and facilities or parks and recreation facilities fulfill that requirement as well. Uh, the Parks Department uh, updates their master plan, um, I think every 10 years. It was last updated in 2010, and they're looking to update it again. Um, so the 1998 comp plan basically references the Parks Open Space Plan. Um, so that requirement is fulfilled as well. Um, so I was, I've been studying the comp plan in a little bit more detail, our 1998 one. Um, we don't have, we can establish procedures for adoption and procedures for amendment. Um, the procedures for amendment, it, the plan right now just says it needs to be updated every few years. Um, the type of plan, can, again, can be map-based, functional, policy, or neighborhood plans. And then the city can determine the relationship between the comp plan and its development regulations. Um, so these, I think, are some improvements that could be made to our plan, just some clarifications. So our current comp plan, like I said, is from 1998. Um, the executive summary section is kind of what, why, and how, um, you know, why we have a comp plan. Um, it says it references the comprehensive land use plan as the centerpiece um, of the document. Uh, the goals and objectives, the baseline studies is base, is Friendswood information. So our boundaries, our highways, our creek systems, our population, housing, and our existing land use. And then there's the major thoroughfare plan section, the parks and open space, the community facilities plan. When this was written, Police department was still in Willowick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the library had just moved into their brand new building, um, <laughs> which has since been remodeled. 
Um, and of course, we've had a, a ton of changes with the, with the fire stations. Um, utility systems, drainage, and then the last chapter is the comprehensive plan. So, uh, like I said, in looking at this more the past few days, um, my proposal to council at this time is going to be that staff and the Planning and Zoning Commission go ahead and update this 1998 plan and what we have now. I think we could, it's just census data that we can find, updating maps, it's just updating information and just getting everything back to, you know, current and what we've got. Um, I think we could do that all in-house. It's going to be a little bit of time. <laughs> um, but like I said, just get this document current, get it breathing again, uh, get it on the shelf uh, or off the shelf in our hands and start using it. Um, and then maybe in five years, if we see the need, you know, to hire a consultant to do a bigger, more robust plan or something at that time, then, you know, maybe we do that. The, uh, the goals and objectives in this plan are still relevant um, as far as our city goes. And so I don't think, you know, like I said, just getting this information updated and moving forward from here um, is kind of the idea at this time. We also have plans that have come forward since that 1998 plan, uh, the downtown improvement plan. We can reference, uh, I think the 1998 plan says that we need a main street uh, and we need to make a plan for our main street corridor. <laughs> and we ha we've done it, check the box. Uh, so like I said, I think updating that plan, I think would make, you know, it shows we've accomplished a lot uh, in 20 years and so I think it'll give a more accurate picture of our city and we can start giving that document to developers again and you know present a more accurate picture of the city um, there's a citywide traffic study underway right now so if anything comes of that that maybe we need to make adjustments to the major thoroughfare plan um, you know out of that study we could do that um, and then the capital improvement plan one other there was a statement in state law that says, uh, actually, so every five years we're required to update our land use assumptions and our capital improvements plan for our impact fees, and y'all are the advisory board for that. And state law does allow you to use those updated land use assumptions to update your comp plan. So I thought that would be a good timing uh, thing to remember that we need to look at the comp plan every five years when we look at that impact fee update, and we could tie those two together. So as far as amendments, uh, we could maybe incorporate that um, provision into the plan and have a, a schedule, <laughs> per se, um, instead of just saying it needs to be looked at every few years. So that is all I have for that. Anybody? Yeah, when we looked at it, we also talked about a sustainability plan. Would that not appear to be viable? Um, so I don't know that. I think that would come in the future, maybe. Um, I think right now, just refreshing the plan and starting to use it again, um, <coughs> that would be something I think we would probably have to hire a consultant for. Um, actually, I've kind of looked into it. Um, oh, yeah? talked to a guy from the Houston Clean Air Alliance and they have some um, sustainability plans that he was going to share and uh, the other one was the uh, Mary Queen Catholic Church has its own sustainability plan which would be kind of local <coughs> to um, Friendswood actually and uh, we could take it and add to it or take away from it for the whole city. So that I think we have some good um, avenues to reach out and, and steal, not steal, borrow, borrow <laughs> what's already been done. Right. Okay. No, we can definitely, I mean, we can look at that and um, except I'll, I'm going to present to city council on December 2nd and if we get head nods, then you know, the subcommittee can start working and... Um, when do you present to city council? Uh, December 2nd. It'll be a, like a work, just a workshop. First Monday, right? Yeah. Mary Queen 
that you either had the sustainability plan offered. Let me see if I can get uh, something from you. Okay. That you could at least show. Okay. Yep, that would be good. Yeah, yeah, I serve on that subcommittee, and then uh, I, I, you're right, it's time to get this plan off the shelf and really start using it. To, it's, it's important the city have that. It's also important for mayor and council to have that, making because any rezoning issues, they get political many times. So we're going to go back to a comp plan and say this is what we agreed on. That's, that's a good idea. Uh, so I, I'm all for trying to get it out quickly in-house, in but and then maybe on down the road, bring in a consultant to kind of firm things up a little bit. Lisa mentioned the subcommittee. You no, know, this could be somewhat a, a living document where we can add to it less than every five years. Maybe if something comes up, we can every six months or every year or something add to that comp plan. But we need to dust it off and get it out there. So I'm all for it. Anybody? This was discussed in your subcommittee. Mm -hmm. So this is a so you're representing the recommendation that the subcommittee that we update the plan, right? Mm -hmm. Did you guys discuss how we approve it? Are we going to one bite at a time? Do we redline the whole document and then bring it through with the risk of it getting choked because there's something in there because council members can't support it? Or we, we discussed that. Um, I have uh, something very similar that I, I deal with at work. So you keep that what we discussed about was keeping your plan pretty high level and pointing to the additional plans so your comprehensive plan is one document that points to all the ones like the parks plan and the sustainability and and so that's why she has the part about how to amend and and update so instead of doing everything all at once every 20 years when you have a need or uh, something that comes up to amend one of your common plans then you keep the uh, the new one always shuffling in. So it becomes a living document rather than a 20 year, all of a sudden you stop and make a whole new one come up in. Okay. Yeah, I, I can buy off on that. The The other concern I have is where does this sit with all of the other non-binding, mm -hmm. not a lot of teeth documents that we have like Vision 2020, the economic development policy. We put all of those out there with really good intent and I don't see the consistency. Um, so I just wanted to voice it that it's a concern. So I, I would like to address it as part of our solution to council is that those are weaknesses that we have as a city and I want to try to do better. So, so can I just follow up on that? Does this have to be approved or are we the approvers? It would be adopted by council by resolution. Meaning they would have to read it all and agree to it? It's yeah. It's pretty meaty. Yeah. Yeah, and I, we haven't, the subcommittee really hasn't gotten into the weeds yet. We didn't want to, I mean, we need to get direction from council before we spend too much time. Um, and honestly, up until this week, I really didn't want to do this <laughs> in the house, just being honest. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's a lot, um, but, and I don't know, just updating this information, I think I could handle if we want new innovative ideas outside the box, um, you know, a lot of cities are getting APA planning awards for these comp plans. I mean, p cities, it's like little trophies now having these comp plans. And I mean, you know, some cities spend a million dollars on their plan. And, but at the end of the day, you have to follow that plan once it's on the books. So, like I said, I think our 1998 plan is, I, I think it's general enough. It has, you know, broad visions and goals um, that, like I said, are still relevant to the city. And, um, you know, I think we could follow. It took, it took uh, two years for us to get the last, I don't know if it was our last resolution, but the economic development policy, I think that was a two year effort mm -hmm. for this type of reason. You either go really generic and it's got no teeth or you put in context that you want to hold counsel to, and then and then if, and they have the right to do so, but they bicker about it, right? And they're like, I don't <laughs> like this because they don't support it, right? So you get caught in the middle, which is which is okay too. That's a healthy, contentious relationship, but it just takes time to work through all of that. So that's I'm on the fence on it. Any changes to the plan to the to the 20? 
How many pages? I just don't read them. 133. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I mean, I don't think as a group we've ever referred to it ever. Well, that's that's part of the issue. I mean, yeah, like I said, I, I feel like a horrible city planner, but this hasn't been done since 1998. <laughs> It is a state requirement. Well, we have, but we meet that yeah. today. Yeah. It's a state requirement to have one, not to use it as part of your decision yeah. process. <laughs> That's where. Yeah. Well, I support getting feedback from city council as to how specific and how it's like you said. It's a trade-off. You can have it loose, and then it's just a document, and it gives you guidance, or it ties your hands, and it makes everybody follow certain rules. And, and which has benefits and shortcomings and, and, and bad things too associated with it. So getting guidance on that before we get kicked off is, I, I, I support that. Yeah, I, I agree. That was a good that was a good step that we took when I was on CDC. Is we spent a lot of time in workshops with council to try to get what are those hot buttons and pain points from them. Right. Uh, don't go general here. Yes, we want specifics here. Yep. So yeah. So it's a it's a painful process, but that's what we're here for. Yeah. Well, in the Vision 2020 plan, I mean. We're coming up on 2020. So <laughs> yeah. right. although the principles and the goals in that plan are still relevant as well, but I don't think we can keep referring to a Vision 2020 plan in the year 2020. Right. <laughs> we need something, you know, yeah. more relevant yeah. and forward thinking. So Yeah, in five years that'll really sound really dumb. Yeah. We brought up <laughs> our subcommittee that uh, I think we all agree we really want council's thoughts on this. Just tell us what to do, and we'll do it. And uh, so, uh, I mean, I'm for a uh, comp plan. I think Friendswood needs it; it needs to be updated. And I'm for spending a little money and bringing outside consultant to do it. But I don't know if the council would feel that way. But. but the worst thing to do is spend a lot of effort and time and and, and angst and get something that the city council says you missed the target right. altogether. Yeah. And so I, I think we need to be aligned yeah. going aligned going in. So I'm, agree with I'm, that. Yeah. yeah. Any other discussion on this? Seeing none, we are now to item six, consideration and possible action regarding future planning and zoning commission meeting dates. Aubrey. So our next regular meeting is scheduled to be on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, so we will not be having that meeting. Good rule, good, good decision. <laughs> so we will just cancel that one. I don't think, we don't have any pressing items that we need to cr do a special meeting for. So. That makes our next regular meeting, uh, our next meeting, so Thursday, December 12th. Um, and then Monday, December 16th is our annual retreat that'll be at the library uh, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then uh, Thursday, December 26th is the second Thursday in December, which will be the day after Christmas. Um, so we will not plan on having that meeting as well. So just one meeting in our annual retreat in December. And you said things are slowing down anyway, so it's not really slowing up yeah. business. Yeah, but I don't. That's pretty normal this time of year? Yeah. OK, communication uh, from commissioners. Um, start with you, Dick, anything? No, Eric, right? Lisa? Our last um, KFB committee meeting was on a Astros playoff day, so. We went through it pretty quick. I didn't have a lot of notes. <laughs> Mark? Good, thank you. Okay. I have nothing either. Uh, the ordinance subcommittee, I, we talked about the things that came out of that. And uh, planning subcommittee, I think we talked about those, unless there's something else you want to bring up, right? Okay. City council liaison, who's been sitting patiently. That's great. Um, so Fish. I really didn't have anything to say until y'all had this last discussion. <laughs> I have something to say. So at my very first retreat, which was a month after I got elected, I started talking about the comprehensive plan really bef with Mo before that because I like to have a vision and I like for everybody to be working in the same direction. And so it's been driving me crazy, really, that we have not had enough. I'm sorry, Aubrey. No, this makes more work for you. No. But it drives me crazy uh, because I'm not always sure exactly which way we want to vote on or I want to vote on something. 
because I'm thinking 80-20 for commercial, for, you know, residential commercial. And so it sometimes drives my vote when I look at those plans and then when I see how old they are. And um, so even at the last, if y'all watched the council meeting, if you were there, I suggested that y'all look at the lot size ordinance uh, so that we're not constantly struggling back and forth on how we're going to vote because I think we ought to all be in sync. Not that we should agree all the time, but um, it just seems like there's not a clear vision. That's me. I may be the lone voice, but I have been a vocal <laughs> voice on that about trying to get these things updated and, and in the right place. So that's just my two cents to let y'all know. I'm just one person on council and I don't know how everybody else feels. but. Uh, it's been a great month. Thank you all very much for all your work. Again, I think everyone on council appreciates it. Um, you really are, a, I think, a very intelligent group of people, and you really do your due diligence with all of this work, and I really appreciate it. So thank you. Oh, and I'll tell you one other thing. So I am <laughs> on a citizen, I'm attending a Citizens uh, FBI Academy, <laughs> and we'll have our last meeting. Next Tuesday night, yes, I'm a secret agent by night. <laughs> City Council A, agent by night. We do it. I have some tricks now. I will miss the next KFB meeting. Lisa, so I'll tell Natasha. Natasha about it anyway. Okay. Right, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Trish. Um, staff, Aubrey? Uh, the October DRC report was included in your backup material. I think it was uh, pretty slim again. <laughs> I think there was two items on it. Um, so if anybody has any questions about those projects, let me know. Um, and then s just to let you know, second reading of the Avalon PUD was approved by council on the 4th. Uh, so that project will be moving forward. And then uh, the Garden Home District rezoning was approved by with first reading uh, by city council on the 4th. Um, I believe it was a 5-2 vote. Um, so. Uh, I think those are the only two items at this time. That was something we had voted, we had suggested not to do, and City Council chose to do it. Yes. Okay. Becky, anything? Um, I will be sending out a little more info to the subcommittee on one or two more items, and then we can get a meeting whenever y'all are ready since we've got which, these. Which subcommittee? The ordinance one? Yes, ordinance subcommittee. Uh, and we can discuss when or how we want to meet. I know holidays are coming up. If we want to try and shoot some things via email, we can do that. If we want to wait and let these current ones go through the process um, and then pick back up. Do you remember what they are? Y'all just. What the two items are? Um, on our to-do list, we still had um, the ZBOA changes that we talked about, which they were on this meeting, but we pulled them because we were doing some last minute changes. But we decided, we did, I thought we decided they didn't want that. We were going to leave that alone. The ZBOA, this no, is the number of we commissioners. Met, no, when the subcommittee met, ZBOA hadn't been, they hadn't met yet. Right, right. So and they now, did meet. Now they have met. They've, and they were okay with it. We're not changing the number of members right. to the board, but we are changing their authority to be in line with state law. Ah, I'm sorry. I missed that. Okay, yeah, okay. So I, I just remembered the one big item of how many commissioners. Okay. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. The number of members is going to stay, but we're going to change their authority. Our ordinance is a lot more detailed right. than state law. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yes. yep. So we have those changes I'll send out to you all. And then the other ones on the to-do list were fairly large items, zoning and subdivision ordinance rewrites, and those are a lot more in-depth. But we'll, we'll knock out a couple more. Do so you think we can get a couple of quick wins on the ZBOA? And what was the other one? The subdivision and zoning ordinance rewrites, which are bigger ones. Okay. Um, there was a remember. downtown discussion that we had brought up from a – from a discussion we had on a previous. Oh, our permitted use table annual review is coming up. So we were going to look at some of those uses that had previously been discussed in the downtown. The downtown so yeah, so. that's on the list as well. And that's in January. So we probably should get Do on something. that sooner rather than later. Yes, no gas stations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so okay. We, we brought that. You brought it up in, in here, so we discussed it. Right. Yes. So I'll send you all some emails, and we'll just go from there as to how, if we want to meet meet in person, meet via email, or however you want to do it. Is there any chance on that to do this? You all have, have the PUD process on there? Because I remember we, we talked about, you know, that on the Wickham track PUD. That, that was a, it didn't have a time limit. So oh, two, with the PUDs expiring? Yeah, it's a too. note under my zoning ordinance rewrite stuff. Okay. And the 90-foot lots, I didn't talk about that. Too. Add them to your list. <laughs> there. 
There's quite the list. <laughs> There's not Thank enough you. hours in the day or meetings in the month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, sir, that's all. Thanks, Becky. Mary Kay, anything? Well, while Aru was talking about comprehensive plan, I went online to look up the author of that bill, the building materials. His name is Dade Phelan, and he's from Beaumont. Well, then, we are to item 8, the adjournment. Thanks very much. We are adjourned.